Good morning, family and friends of our dear sister, Dimpna. Our gathering hymn this morning will be number 548, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And uh, we'll be starting the Mass in just a moment. Thank you. Please stand.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us prepare to celebrate the mysteries of our faith. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us all our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your servant, Dimpna, who for love of Christ walked the way of perfect charity, may rejoice in the coming of your glory, and together with her sisters may delight in the everlasting happiness of your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite Fran to come forward for the first reading. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A valiant woman, who can find her? Her value is far beyond pearls. She is always about something good, and she does her work with eager hands. She reaches out her hands to the poor she extends her arms to the needy. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at the days to come. She keeps good watch on the conduct of her household. Many women have done admirable things, but she has surpassed them all. The woman who is wise is the one to praise. Give her a share in what her hands have worked for, and let her works tell her praises at the city gates. The word of the Lord. The psalm is hymn number 377, Here I Am, Lord. Please join in the refrain. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell I will break their hearts of stone 
give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord, I have heard to come forward for the second reading. A reading from St. Paul to the Romans. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the Lord of God in Christ. Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Dimp was the real thing. As was mentioned a couple of times at her funeral in New Hampshire, you never had to worry about what she was thinking. She told you straight out. She was a sister of mercy for 68 years, and the spirit of Mother Macaulay really flowed through her veins. I believe that Catherine Macaulay was never shy herself about sharing her opinions. In the early days, the Sisters of Mercy were called the Walking Sisters, because unlike the cloistered religious of the day, the followers of Mother Macaulay walked out of the convent to care for the needy. Sister Dimp walked, or drove, out of Deer Crossing and ministered to the needs of so many. What a smile she had captured in the picture at the head of the aisle. She taught first grade for many years, and I would have loved to have had her in school. I'm sure she was nurturing, caring, and encouraging. She later became a reading specialist and then found her niche in pastoral care of the sick as chaplain at Cape Cod Hospital and then director of pastoral care here at Christ the King. I have no doubt that she was the compassionate face of Christ to her patients, and she helped many parishioners deal with difficult pastoral situations here in the parish in a non-judgmental, compassionate manner. She did, knitted many a shawl, and I recall visiting folks who had wrapped the shawls around their shoulders and felt really the love of Sister Dimp and the others who were part of the prayer shawl ministry. She also coordinated many a bereavement group, helping folks to work through their grief and hopefully experience the light that comes with sharing and praying together. She was also Irish, through and through. If it was Irish, it was okay with her. No judgments passed. After communion, Sister Margaret Carey will share other thoughts about Dim. At this time, we simply remember that, above all, Sister was a woman of faith, a woman who believed in a God who loved her unconditionally and whose promises were contained in the sacred scripture we just heard. Dimp was the valiant woman described in the book of Proverbs. She was always about doing good, reaching out to the poor, and extending her arms to the needy. Dimp knew, as did St. Paul, that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus. Nothing, not even death itself. With the final reading from John, transports us back to a dialogue between Martha and Jesus after the death 
of her sister, or her, her brother, Lazarus. And there's a dialogue in which Jesus says to Martha, do you believe? Do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life, and whoever believes in me will never die? Martha says, yes. Dim said, yes. And we ask for the grace and the faith to respond in the affirmative as well. We pray that Dimp has been welcomed into paradise and that she will be granted peace and rest now and forever. I invite you to stand for the prayer of the faithful and ask Dan to come and help us. The response to our prayer of the faith will be, send us your mercy, God. God of mercy and compassion, we come today to release the spirit of Dimpness Smith. Be with us as we mourn her loss and celebrate her life. Dipna was a woman of faith and spirituality. We pray for those who minister to the people of God in the Christian community, clergy, women religious, lay ministers, hospital chaplains, that they serve in the name of God with compassion and mercy. Let us pray. But send us. Dipna was a vibrant member of the community at Christ the King Parish. We pray in gratitude for her experiences of friendship, support, and liturgical bounty that are the hallmarks of this parish. Let us pray. Send us Send your, your mercy, mercy, God. Dimpna was a true and loyal daughter of Catherine Macaulay and was especially proud to be a sister of mercy from New Hampshire. We pray for all women religious, that they personify the ideals of their founders and faithfully carry out the goals of their ministries. Let us pray. Send out your mercy, Lord. Dimpna loved her family. We today pray for her sisters, Anastasia and Pat, for Pat's husband, Jack, for her niece and nephew, Janet and Jack, their spouses, Sven and Donna, and her cousins, Tommy and Ann Hardiman, that they find comfort in good memories of their sister, aunt, and cousin, who had a life well-lived and a death that was peaceful and merciful. Let us pray. Lord, send down your mercy, O oh God. Dimp loved her friends, and she had many of them, but no one closer than Sister Shirley who shared life and home with her for so many years. We ask that God comfort and sustain Shirley and all of us whose hearts ache with the loss of Dimp. Let us pray. Send us your mercy, O oh God. We pray in thanksgiving for educators who, like Dimpna, are charged with the challenge of opening up the world to thousands of young people thirsting for knowledge. Let us pray. Send us your mercy, O oh God. We pray for artists and creative people who like Dipna bring color and beauty to the world around them. Let us pray. Send us your mercy, O oh God. We remember the deceased members of the Smith family, Dim's father John, her mother Annie, her sister Peg, her brothers Tom and Frank, that together they enjoy the fruits of their labors in the kingdom that was promised to them. Let us pray. Your mercy, oh God. We remember, too, the deceased Sisters of Mercy who preceded us on the journey from time to eternity, who, with Catherine, were there on Sunday night to greet Dimp with a comfortable cup of tea. Let us pray. Send us your mercy, O oh God. Thank you, God 
for the gift you gave us in the person of Dimp. May we appreciate the gifts we have received from her, a deep spirituality, a joyous presence, and a compassionate heart. O oh God, good and gracious, hear these prayers which we place before you in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn for the preparation of the gifts is number 343, I am the bread of life. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant our supplications, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice may benefit your departed servant, Dimpna, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and Let 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, the College of Bishops, and all the clergy, religious, and the people of God. Remember your servant, Dimthna, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter into my roof.
blessed they with peaceful spirits, blessed they with gentle hearts, gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom. invite Sister Margaret Carey to come forward to share some thoughts. Good morning, everyone. If someone were to ask, what embodies the spirit of Dimpna Smith? One possible answer may be 
Well, how do you hold a moonbeam in your hand? However, when asked this question, many sisters responded immediately with these words. She was a free spirit, a gentle spirit, joyful, happy. She had fun, laughed, lived life to the fullest, had a song in her heart. She had a beaming smile, and when she hugged you, you knew you were hugged. She was welcoming, inclusive, and sensitive, very sensitive. Her mother once said of her, she would cry for the ducks going barefoot. Dipna put compassion into action. How many of us saw her sitting in the rocking chair in the living room, knitting yet another prayer shawl for someone needing comfort and consolation? Or how many, because of her bereavement groups, were able to move on with life after the death of a loved one? She was an excellent listener. She listened with her heart, and her heart had lots of room. She was dependable. Dimp was a devoted daughter, a loving sister, a proud aunt. She was a loyal and true friend. Many of us in this church know she was a dog lover. Many a day, the caretakers of Zorba, Casey, Buster, Misty, or Tessa would see her giving long, loving looks at their sleeping dogs and saying, oh, she is so beautiful. Dimp was wonderfully creative and left us asking, well, who is going to decorate the kitchen window for the holidays? Dimp shopped at thrift shops and would look for an article of clothing that others had rejected because they were too something. She would see its potential, take it home, clean it, alter it, try it on. In Dimp's hands, that jacket or sweater or dress would become stunningly beautiful. Or she would go to the Christmas tree shop and look in bins for trinkets that others had rejected because they were too something. She would look at that trinket, see its potential, know where she could place it, with what she could place it, and how she could place it. In Dimp's hand, that trinket became part of a stunningly beautiful holiday theme. But there's an analogy here. Dimp responded to people in the same way. She would be alert for those who had been rejected by others because they were too something. She would see that person's potential, take him or her to herself, offer encouragement, friendship, love, and in Dimp's hands and heart, that person began to realize his or her own stunning inner beauty. But is there anything that can be said that can truly sum up who Dimpna was? Yes, three things. Dimp was Ireland. Dimp was Mercy. Dimp was New Hampshire. But Dimpna left us. Well, no, her body left us. But this beautiful, warm, loving spirit still lives within those of us who loved her. And so, in the words of an anonymous poet, we are left with some choices. We can shed tears that she is gone, or we can smile because she has lived. We can close our eyes and pray that she'll come back, or we can open our eyes and see all that she's left. Our hearts can be empty because we can't see her, or we can be full of the love we shared with her. We can turn our backs on tomorrow and life yesterday, or we can cherish her memory because of yesterday. <coughs> we can remember her and think only that she's gone, or we can cherish her memory and let it live on. There is an Irish tradition surrounding death. A window is left open after the death of a loved one so that her spirit can fly free. Dimp, over there, your window is open. 
and the time has come for us to let you fly. We do it with thanksgiving for the gift that you have been to us and with an Irish blessing. May the blessings of light be upon you, light without and light within. And in all your comings and goings, may you ever have a kindly greeting from those you meet on the road. Finally, Catherine McCauley, the founders of the Sisters of Mercy, our favorite Irish poet, has the last word. On her deathbed, she said to the sisters surrounding her, will we meet again in heaven? Oh, what joy to think of it. Amen. Just before our final prayer, a very belated word of welcome to Christ the King Church and Parish. And as you can see from the numbers that are here, she was very beloved, uh, not only to the Sisters of Mercy, but to our parish community as well. Grateful for the presence of four retired priests of the Diocese of Fall River, Father Lopes, Monsignor Tosti, who's somewhat familiar to the people here in Christ the King, Monsignor Perry, and Monsignor Moore. In the tradition of Mother Macaulay, you're invited to the hall afterwards for a comfortable cup of tea, but seeing the numbers here, you might have to be satisfied with half a cup of tea. Let us pray. May the sacrifice of your church, we pray, O Lord, benefit the soul of your servant, Timpna, so that she who received the sacrament of Christ's mercy may enter his company together with your saints, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is number 421, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the Then sings my soul, my Savior God.